Well, uh, Jimmy Fallon in the house, because Greg is off. Uh, and you can't really blame him. It's kind of a slow news day, right? <laughs> Some people have asked me offline, but I'm actually not sure what the King of Late Night is up to tonight. Uh, but we do know he's not riding roller coasters at Six Flags because they have a height requirement. <laughs> I love you, Greg. Don't ban me from the show. Uh, as for our country, where the hell are we after indicting a president for the first time in our 246 year history? That's right, America's 246, same age as Dianne Feinstein. <laughs> Like a lot of you, I watched Trump fly home today after getting indicted, and I gotta be honest, I found the whole thing disturbing. But I will admit, after two years of Biden, it was refreshing to see a president make it up the airplane steps in one try. <laughs> now, the good news for the country is they didn't handcuff Trump, so we were spared the banana republic image of a president in handcuffs. Yeah, Alvin Bragg was in a really tough spot on that one. I mean, after all, if he handcuffs a president, Next thing you know, I'll have to start handcuffing robbers and rapists and murderers. <laughs> Come on, Bragg. Come on, man. No, no, under Alvin Bragg's woke prison policies, New York looks like Gotham City before Batman comes, except Batman ain't coming because he's not vaccinated. Nope. <laughs> But that's where most Americans find themselves today. We're wondering how we went from feeling like a shining city on a hill to a rundown place where you can buy a house for a dollar, you know? But enough about Kat's hometown of Detroit. Um, <laughs> I love you, Kat. Love you. We were told Trump got indicted because nobody was above the law. Uh-uh. But Alvin Bragg has lowered 52% of violent felonies to a misdemeanor. That's why no objective observer sees this indictment as anything more than a political persecution. Alvin Bragg ran for office on a vow that he would arrest Donald Trump. And he did this in New York City, a town that's so liberal they wanted to defund the cop and the village people. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> Which is why Alvin Bragg has everything to win, even if he loses the case. You see, Democrats have a long history of failing upwards simply by becoming national names. And if you don't believe me, ask Mayor Pete Buttigieg who did such a poor job with the roads in South Bend, Indiana, the locals nicknamed him Pothole Pete. Now, in Mayor Pete's defense, it's hard to fix potholes and breastfeed babies at the same time. <laughs> but throw in a failed presidential run, and the next thing you know, Pothole Pete was in charge of every road in America as Transportation Secretary Pete. Isn't it insane to think Pothole Pete is in charge of transportation? That's like having an education secretary named Summer School Sal, you know? <laughs> or a vice president named Kamala Harris. <laughs> She's another person who failed her way to higher office. Kamala ran for the Democratic nomination and was polling at 1% when she dropped out. Think about that. Our first female vice president was less popular with Americans than Meghan Markle is with Britons. <laughs> but for Alvin Bragg, this is his pothole Pete moment. Sure, crime's through the roof, women are getting assaulted left and right in the city, but a Democrat DA doesn't need to arrest violent felons as long as he's got Stormy Daniels putting guys in handcuffs. <laughs> Sorry about that one, Melania. Uh, <laughs> kidding. And that's where we find ourselves tonight. Trump has been indicted because Alvin Bragg doesn't have the balls to go after real criminals. And Democrats are fine with it because their obsession with getting Trump has gotten so emotional, it's denying them the self-awareness that would otherwise tell them, you know, they sound insane to normal people. I mean, think about this. Democrats swore Trump colluded with Russia to swing an election, and when that didn't work, they impeached him for meddling in Ukraine. And when that didn't work, they impeached him for trying to stage a coup. And when that didn't work, they raided his house and said he stole classified documents. None of it worked. But today, they finally got their big moment. Trump got arrested for financial crimes? Dude, this was their OJ chase. But in this instance, the guy they claimed had murdered Nicole is only being charged with double parking outside her house. <laughs> and they expect every one of us to be just as excited as they are because they don't have the self-awareness to realize most people are looking at them and saying, yo, these <laughs> are crazy. So true. Donald Trump was the first president to be impeached twice. That went nowhere. Now he's become the first president to be arrested. That'll go nowhere. 
They say you never forget your first, you know, unless it was with Bill Cosby. Um, <laughs> Jimmy. And by the way, don't come at me with that Cosby joke. He is out of jail, by the way. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, this whole case is just a he said, she said, she said, she said, she said, she said. <laughs> It's a stupid joke, but nothing's a stupider, dumber joke than this indictment. Democrats would have you believe they arrested a former president because the man is out of control. But history will show that they were. And, you know, for all I know, who knows how it will play out, but the party that gave us two terms of Bill Clinton is once again trying to convince you that Donald Trump is the most disgusting thing that's ever happened in the Oval Office, to which I say, close, but no cigar. <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guests. As a former Miss Florida Citrus, her talent was having teeth. Former State Department spokeswoman and founder of Polaris National Security, Morgan Ortegas is here. When you talk about the best hosts on Fox Business, he's met both of them. Co-host of the Big Money Show, Brian Brenberg in the house. If he looked any younger, the Democrats would take him to a drag show. Ho host of the Guy Benson Show, Guy Benson is here. Yes, he is. And she was just indicted today on 34 counts of being awesome. You damn right, Fox News contributor. Cat Tim is in the house. It's always shocking. Hey, everybody. Uh -huh. Sorry, it's always you. shocking when someone says they... something nice to me. Why'd <laughs> <laughs> like you throw her off like that? Like, That's not true. Even with the do, are you a little freaked out? <laughs> yeah. In New York, when someone's nice, it usually means they're robbing you. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? You like grab your wallet. Um, but let me jump in on this. Alvin Bragg spoke uh, shortly before we came on the air, and I want to toss to that really quick before I ask you a question. We cannot and will not normalize serious criminal conduct. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I'm going to react to that, because every woman we know in Manhattan carries two cans of mace, in case they run into Joe Mackey on the subway. But stick with me. <laughs> the point is, no woman feels safe in Manhattan. Isn't he already minimizing and normalizing serious crime? That's so interesting, because I don't think anybody who's actually super excited that, you know, Trump got indicted is actually going on and on about this specific crime. Mm -hmm. You're like, we can't let this ever happen. This was so bad. <laughs> they go on about how much they hate him and how yeah. they want him to go away, and he deserves it because he's such a bad person. So they really broaden the scope. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah, in New York, it's just, it, there's a lot of crime. It's gross. It's ugly. I was in Charleston last weekend, uh -huh. and, you know, we were, like, talking to a bartender. I was with my husband. I was like, it's so nice here. It's so pretty. Like, there's no needles anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and they were like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's like not a thing most other places. Oh, no. New York is just a dump right Uniquely now. Uniquely disgusting. Right? But on the other side of that, it's also expensive. It's, it is. It's very, <laughs> at least. It is. New York is like a spiritual dominatrix. It takes all your money. It calls you names. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, Brenberg, I want to go to you really quick. Uh, you told me backstage you watched all the Stormy Daniels videos to prepare for this. Um, <laughs> I can't go on this show. I can't go on the show. It's, it's a thing about you book a business guy. They're going to do the research. Look, They're going to yeah, do, the do my research. research. They're going to do the research. I'm a scholar. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He's a good, decent man. But there's another clip of Alvin Bragg I want to speak to, and I want you to react to this really right. quick. Can you give me the other Bragg? That is why we have a history in the Manhattan DA's office of vigorously enforcing white-collar crime. This charge, it can be said, is the bread and butter of our white-collar work. At its core... This case today is one with allegations like so many of our white-collar cases. Now, I, the reason I made an adult movie joke is doesn't that read like the thin plot of an adult movie? After all of this, he's trying to sell us class warfare? Well, he said the word vigorous enforcement. I was in my office. I couldn't hear it from the sirens on the street <laughs> below. Like, I can't hear you above this. I love the woman yelling. Okay, I, can I take this somewhere? I, I was watching all this unfold today. This is where my mind goes. Remember the movie Strange Brew? Of course. Bob and Doug McKenzie want a free beer, so they put a mouse in a beer bottle and bring it to the brewery. He put 34 mice in 34 beer bottles, <laughs> brought them to the brewery, and everyone's like, we see what you did here. There's nothing here. That that's how this played out today. <laughs> well, 
Listen, it's still better than what Bud Light did with a beer bottle this right. week, but we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, Morgan, the Democrats love to, elect, you know, um, they love to lecture us about the importance of protecting democracy. Yes. But would you say that this is kind of not that, to be arresting a major party nominee and having a trial that'll kick off in primary season? Well, not only would I say that, we're seeing foreign leaders say that. Uh, the president of El Salvador came out today and, and said what you've seen in America is... Uh, the opposition candidate, the, the leading person for the presidential nomination, and in fact, beating Biden in plenty of polls, um, has been arrested. And, and the president of El Salvador said, how can America, it, I'm paraphrasing, but essentially, how can America now lecture about democracy and their foreign policy, seeing this today? You're also seeing uh, this has united the never Trump yeah. and the full Trump parts of the Republican Party. Mitt Romney gave a very robust defense of the president today. Uh, president Trump, that's not something I thought I would have said yeah. anytime soon. Jeb Bush defended him. So, you know, I guess Alvin Bragg has done something uh, finally for the Republican right. Party. You got never Trumpers to come around. So, yeah, who that? knew? I mean, you know you're screwed up when you piss off the guy in mom jeans, Mitt yeah. Romney. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like mom jeans. Yeah, no, they're, they're hot. I mean, look, am I going to judge anyone's fashion in the, <laughs> what I'm wearing? <laughs> no, not with that pink blazer on. Hey, girl. Uh, guy, let me ask you this, though. For real, on, on a serious political level, are we being a prisoner of the moment in saying this helps Trump? Because getting past this moment, when it comes time to court, you know, independent voters in the general election, is this baggage going to scare people away? Is that kind of the point of this? First of all, I defend your pink jacket. Yeah, you do. Because yes, I'm you wearing, do. You're wearing a pink shirt. Yes, I'm you wearing do. A pink shirt. Pink yes, you do. Wearing pink. On arraignment day, we wear pink. Thank you. On this show. Hey, Ortega, oh, how about I you? I am too. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Ortega. I just remembered. <laughs> how about you defund the fashion police? How about that, girlfriend? I kidding. We love you. Go ahead. Um, in the moment, this does help Trump in Republican politics because of the rally around the flag effect that Morgan just referenced. And his first job, if he wants to be president again, is to win the Republican primary. Yeah. So I would imagine his attitude will be, if I get to that point, then I'll figure out how to appeal to independence and that sort of thing. I also think that we're making a lot of declarative hot take statements right now about what this will mean nine months from now. Mm -hmm. um, I would just pump the brakes on that a little bit. We have very short attention spans in this country. News cycles move very fast. But in terms of fundraising and polls and that sort of thing, and just a genuine sense of outrage, like, are they really doing this? The first time in history is for this. Uh, obviously, near term, this is helping him. Yeah, OK, he's going to make some money. He's raised, what did you say, Brenberg, you're the business guy, eight million? Eight, I think eight million bucks, yeah. I mean, Alvin Bragg's the best fundraiser he's ever had and the biggest uniter in the Republican Party. I don't think he set out to do either one of those things. But man, he's succeeding on that front. Now, is it true, because Biden was asked before we came on the air and he didn't comment, is it because he thinks Alvin has a brother named Simon and Theodore? <laughs> he, he's got his cassette tapes in there and he's playing them on fast forward. I told those rascals not to do it. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.